Good morning, folks. Enjoy the calmer 24 hours our star has delivered to us here. We had a tiny filament lift away on the departing limb down south, but that's about it. We do have filaments coming in as well, backward C shape here. And one on the north that, having crested, is turning in now. The top space weather story was back here at Earth, however. The auroras have become increasingly bright the last few hours as a coronal hole stream is really setting in. We saw the density spike at the start. It's now followed by a rise in both plasma speed and temperature. We went from less than 2,000 Kelvin to nearly 100,000, and Earth has entered a geomagnetic storm. It's just at level 1, a KP5, which is a minor event. The Uyen tropical storm in the Indian Ocean is intensifying as we got that geomagnetic activity. It's heading slightly west towards Madagascar. Solar flaring? A whole lot of the same. Nothing. There are actually some growing sunspot groups on our star, but they have smaller umbras than we've seen and are generally not mixing magnetically. We're coming back to Soho because of another sun-diving comet. That dark diagonal line is a piece of the satellite that holds that central disk blocking solar glare, and right above it you should see a little comet running up towards the sun, right above that darker line one more time. This was indeed a Kreutz comet, tiny though and died well before reaching our star. Coronal holes. That southern opening is becoming very visible now and will be facing Earth most in just a few days. Top quake of the day was a five-pointer in Spain. They really do not get these very often, actually hit six on one manual reading. Also had a couple rumbles in the Gulf of Aden, which is also fairly unusual. Perhaps you've read the news lately that the Great Lakes ice extent is nearing 85% coverage, and the articles claim that's above average. <laughs> Indeed, as average is only about 55% coverage. And indeed, now it has jumped up over 85% and it's still climbing. There is a ton of variability to these readings year to year, but we've never seen two straight years at 90%, which is almost guaranteed to occur by next week. Polar ice update. The North has been struggling the last few weeks and it's at the lower end of the record coverage. While Antarctica has never seen this much ice coverage at the peak of southern summer at least not since humans have been watching. Power low in Canada driving the weather almost everywhere to the immediate south. A weak but moisture-filled convergence continues stretching across the United States and being frozen by Arctic air coming down from the north. Somewhere around negative 10 right now in my hometown of Pittsburgh, and even after growing up here, that's not fun. Europe with lows all over the place. Contrast them with a the high-pressure node in western Russia. When we pull up the precipitation zones, it's mostly purple, except for western Russia, indeed cleared by that high-pressure node. Down under, we've got a ton of tropical moisture dipping down over the northern portion of Australia, while that primary convergence from yesterday is mostly between nations. Northern Australia and the southeast corner holding the convergence take the watches tonight, but New Zealand will be back in the mix if that line moves east. Lastly, folks, if you didn't catch part two with Michael Steinbacher, it was posted last night and is linked for you right below this video. Solid discussion and good links to his material as well. This man is pretty genuine, and if you give him a chance, you will be pleased. Got the current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.